Usually when you look at leaderboards, when you see names, especially professionals out there, you, you kind of see their resume. Um, yes, I would love people to know my name, but at the same time, I would love for them to associate that name with me as a person. Good, how are you? Good to see you again. Yeah. You ready to get going? Yes. Alright, let's do it. I feel like I've always dedicated myself to going back to the basics and just seeing myself in the stage of understanding where my game needs to be. I remember that in all our lessons, and even till now, like when I'm working on something, it's always a stock nine. Okay. Seeing how my swing has changed. It really shows how how long a journey can be and how much more you can look into, you know, your past self. Do a little side-by-side -side comparison. I was the little kid that was a little scared of what he would say about my golf swing. The minute that I entered the hitting bay in the golf tech in Newport Beach, um, I was I was low-key shaking, <laughs> but all in all, the lesson ended up going really well. It was just an initial introduction to golf technology that I've never really seen before. I really appreciated how he broke down a lot of things for me. A lot of my knowledge came from his expertise, and um, now that I'm able to kind of work with him again, it just reminds me of those days. One of the last lessons we ever had, I think you and I just sat down and talked. I do remember that. We did like. a little mental game thing and we kind of yeah. discovered some differences of how you feel like you are in your everyday life versus on the golf course. Right. I mean, like, I think shortly after that, you went out and shot like 64 a junior world qualifier, right? That was in Alhambra. Yeah. Wow. Right? I remember that. That was, the, was... That was the first time I shot so low yeah. in, a, in a round. Yeah. When you go on a public range, there's no sense of privacy. And there's a lot of outside noise, outside distractors that may affect a player's game, especially with it being indoors. Sometimes if you're in a different state, if the weather's bad, it's definitely an asset to have. Before I had to wear a monitor, um, like those monitor gears, now you don't even need them. Uh, you can literally see them on camera and it was really cool to see how the motion sensors can detect every single one of your movements and I think that helps a lot, especially when you want to know what your body's doing. You see your swing every single time you hit a golf ball and you see your stats uh, and the you know, spin rates, how far you hit it every single time. Those types of information are very valuable for you to be as consistent as you can be when, you know, you're competing and trying to get to the top of your game. I think that I do spend longer hours than a lot of the people that I know, and that's what allowed me to get to this point in my career and I was able to really grind and these long hours didn't just consist of hitting balls. I took time to understand what I was doing. I took time to figure out drills on my own to see what my ball would do if I did this, this and this. And just understanding these little details um, kind of catapulted me in terms of my golf knowledge. There's also other motion measurements to go along with that, you know, to help us create that speed that we want and control our path and whatnot. But, right. you know, swing obviously looks really, really good. Um, there's reasons for that. Biggest surprise in my career is winning the U.S. Women's Amateur in 2020. I think that in that moment, I realized that everything is a grind. Nothing comes to you on a gold platter. 
If I were to walk in and meet my younger self um, and she knew all the achievements that I have accomplished so far, um, I feel like she would definitely be awestruck. I never dared to think how far I could get with this sport. I just enjoyed it and I, I feel like I've definitely made my younger self proud. I was able to get this far and hopefully I can keep improving.